happening. That's recording. All right, here we go in three, two, one. Hello and welcome. Thanks for joining us again under the library where we play Call of Cthulhu, record it, and post it for your entertainment. Uh, we are doing something a little different tonight. We are not going to be playing our Bloodstone campaign because we are missing Wayne, and apparently there are horrible things about to happen to everybody, so Michael wants to wait until everyone's together before we continue. So, in lieu of that, we are going to play the most basic Call of Cthulhu module that exists. It is the starter piece, um, and apparently it, it's supposed to take one hour, so um, we might not finish it tonight, uh, but we're going to give it a shot. So my name's Arthur. Uh, I am going to be playing Frank tonight. Um, I will, for those watching on YouTube, I'll be updating character names as we go um, because I just haven't had time to get them in. So, for your reference, Rick is playing Olga Bubashevsky. Emily is Matilda Bancroft. Chris is Wilfred Punkernob, because of course he is. Scott is Officer Flanagan. And as always, our keeper is the amazing Michael. Michael, take us away. Hey, thanks for joining us tonight. Call of Cthulhu is a horror tabletop role-playing game featuring scenes of maybe graphic violence. Who knows tonight? Probably no cannibalism, but we can't promise it. Um, but we hope you join us. We also have our uh, first Patreon. If you'd like to join us there, we're going to start our monthly give give give. Give giveaways always. giveaways our monthly giveaways so we'd love for you to join us there and, and reach out and hit us up on our website under the library.com if you have any questions or thoughts for us um as art suggested this is uh the intro scenario published by chaosium and we thought we could squeeze it in in two hours before we return to our regularly scheduled cannibalistic bloodbath in bloodstone next week so that said, uh, we'll get started, but first we're going to have the investigators introduce themselves to you. Emily? Sure. Everybody's in shock because I didn't screw it up. Yeah, you well, there was you a little bit to. in the middle there yeah, with you, the Patreon. You really tried to screw it up. You just didn't quite successfully screw it up. Okay. Thanks. Come on, talk, <laughs> clock is ticking here. All right, so tonight I will be playing Matilda Bancroft. Matilda lives at the Ma Shanks boarding house along with many of the other players. And her house is her community and she knows everyone in the house. I know everyone in the house. I care about them and I care about knowing their business. So do you want a long explanation or a short explanation? No, that's probably good. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah. Oh, here, I'm supposed to read this to introduce it. <laughs> Mr. James Gardner. So remember that thing recluse? about not screwing it up? Yeah, I, so I really screwed it up. <laughs> a recluse who lives in your boarding house has not been seen or heard from for two days. Each of you has a reason to see if he is in his room. Through persuasion, bribes, or your own means, the landlord of this boarding house has been convinced to unlock the door and check on the tenant while also letting you inside. Okay. Great. All right. Olga, you want to talk about your boarding house? Are you what to know about the night? Nope. Nope. Uh, nope. Hold on. nope. 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 <laughs> nope. 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 <laughs> Not try that out uh, fresh. Uh, <laughs> one second here. No, I think you should definitely try it out fresh. That's <laughs> way more entertaining for us. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I am uh, Olga Lubyshevsky. I uh, have this uh, uh, boarding house I help her run from uh, Bashix, uh, who is far too terribly old. She is uh, just uh, skin, bones, and ash now, uh, horribly old. Uh, I am uh, widowed, and um, I uh, help uh, run things. Uh, my tender old son, uh, Tommy Bobby. Tommy Bobby. He's got two first names. It just sort of it's came out. It just, it just sort Never of trust came him with two first names. Nope. Uh, that, little Michael bastard, Frank. that little bastard told me he was 11. <laughs> and I gave him liquor and smokes. <laughs> yes, he says he's I, He says he's 11. I think only 10. I don't know which. Um, anyway, 
but uh, we have many uh, uh, wonderful and not so wonderful tenants that I must uh, uh, heed their vexed and calls and ignore most. But otherwise, there's some very nice tenants, particularly, I don't know why I'm now transitioning the accent. It's terrible. Uh, <laughs> particularly James, James E. Wamsey. I mean, James Gardner. Yes, Gardiner. He's also lovely, but um, uh, that's that's all. <laughs> it's really amazing that it takes us so long to go through campaigns. I don't, I don't understand how that happens. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's all. <laughs> well, maybe if somebody talks next, we can keep going through this one. Oh, I thought you were telling us who to talk. Yeah. I'll go. Oh, uh, remember, remember, Michael, I, that was yeah, your you job. Were saying, yeah, you were <laughs> telling us to go. But anyway, uh, yeah, I live in uh, Moskank Sporting House. Uh, the, I'm a bookstore owner. Uh, the depression has hit my store really hard. Things are tough. Um, my my main focus and interest is uh, selling rare books, uh, but the uh, that part of the business is kind of slowed to a trickle, uh, and uh, Something I enjoy doing is uh, reading, also collecting and reading arcane books with, especially with an occult bent. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Gardner uh, is also a uh, uh, an occult book uh, aficionado, and uh, uh, I I consider him to be uh, a friend. Uh, Frank, you want to take it from there? Uh, yeah, see, my, my name's Frank. Uh, I live in the stupid boarding house, and, and uh, unlike, uh, what's what's her name over there, uh, Matilda, she knows everybody and cares everybody. I, I know about everybody. I don't care about anybody. I, I'm just out for myself. I'm trying to take care of myself and my, maybe my family. Uh, so I, I, I'm just going to make sure that, that I get mine. And to do so, I, I'm, I'm starting to get into a life of crime because that's where the real money is, is Etsy. <laughs> is Etsy? That's what I heard, too. Is at, I heard. Is at. Oh, I know. okay. I thought comma, it, yeah. at, like comma, C. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I you're, heard Etsy is a good place for now, a life of crime. Now, you see, yeah, it, yeah once, I start, once I start this thing, I might start up a, a, a thing on a on a fictional thing that will exist in the future. Yeah. Because I'm a tough guy. Because that, that's I, rated C. I, I, like, uh, I like macrame in my spare time. <laughs> All, right. All right. That's Frank. Uh, Officer Flanagan. All right. Uh, I uh, so Officer Flanagan is a beat cop, uh, mostly Italian neighborhood, but a nice Irish guy. Uh, he's been trying to make friends and build connections because he's made for much more than just walking the beat. He wants to be a detective one day. Um, it's a long shot for me to get there, especially because uh, there's not a lot of guys like me in the detective desk, but. I'm doing everything I can, and I got called to the boarding house to investigate something, and while I don't want anyone to be hurt, if it's a murder, uh, there's a chance that it could help make my career give me a chance to investigate before the detectives actually show up. All righty. You're rooting Thank for you, a murder. Thank you, investigators. What's that? He's rooting for a murder. He's rooting for a murder. Maybe All right. He committed the murder just to make That's... his career. Done. See? <laughs> Less than an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do it. <laughs> make a, make a win call of Cthulhu some. roll. <laughs> oh, oh, maybe if I get uh, one. I got a nine. Close, but no cigar. Man, that's really close to winning. You almost won, but you still lost. <laughs> All right. The year is 1931. You live in Providence, Rhode Island in Ma Shanks Boarding House. Times are tough. The Great Depression means that immigrants and longtime residents, including you, are experiencing hard times. You have all gathered outside the room of Mr. James Gardner. He's not been seen for at least two days, and everyone is getting concerned for his well-being. The landlady rattles some keys, finding the one for Gardner's room. An almost imperceptible shake in her hands as she fits the key in the lock. Knocking once more just to be sure there's no response. <laughs> she turned the key in the lock and the door is slowly opened. From within. 
Wait, are we? So we're all there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. everybody's okay. crowding the door. Sweet. I love it. We're getting right into so, it. So this is like some Scooby Doo level, like just head yeah. over head over head. Is that? Okay. <laughs> yes. Yes. The whole but thing. I'm, is, I'm, I'm sure the whole the thing front, is like a, a Scooby Doo one back. room one shot. I'm pushing people back because I'm like, hey, everyone, back up. This is a job for the police, not for you, you ne'er do wells. You know, Sorry. I've never you seen break. them. I'm keeping my eye on you. I've never seen the inside of Mr. James's uh, space before. You know, most people I've at least spoken to, but a cup of tea, something more congenial, but he's just always shut in there. I'm very interested. Have you ever heard the odd poetry that he reads at night? Any of you here in the boarding house? Of course, of course. I don't know why you care so much, Matilda. You should not care so much. You should just... uh... No, you shouldn't, though. You shouldn't. It's another language. Do you know the language that he's been speaking? Uh, he speaks so many beautiful languages. I don't know. Yes, but uh, you, you don't. Do you know? Do you know? Of course. Uh, uh, he recently, it's an Italian neighborhood. He recently acquired a primer of uh, Greek uh, language and vocabulary. Perhaps it was Greek. Perhaps. Maybe we'll get a look at it when we go inside. Yes, it just sounded course. very odd. Matilda, oh, do you odd. know any languages? Beautiful. That is such a good question, Keeper. <laughs> I do not. I know German. Oh, I know German. Okay, well, that won't. All right. Es ist nicht Deutsch. I don't know if we should censor that ich or not. Ich Deutsch. <laughs> do I need to bleep that later on? <laughs> I have no idea. All right. It's uh, a pretty fucking family show. Keep it clean there. Yeah. Right? You get this one. This one's like the most sanitary scenario ever. I have to liven it up. Oh, a little we'll bit. we'll right. dirty it up. From within comes the lingering smell of candles, rot, long since burned out, and mm. something sickly sweet and copper like. Copper like. Looking in, you see it framed in the shafts of sunlight, streaming through gaps in the curtains. <gasps> a body. Yeah, there's, okay, a, there's a dead guy over there. No, no, it can't be. No. Hey, yeah, look at him. All He's right. way dead. Can you no, smell no. that? I'm going in. I'm going in to check talk. it out. The body hey, yeah, is lying check on, it out. A, on a tarpaulin stretched out on the floor. You can see dried blood. The man's body and who, who knows if it's a man yet? All right. I guess it's a man mm-hmm. now. The man's body and clothing are covered in blood. It looks as though he somehow fell over from a kneeling position. The body is wearing a green tweed coat and a brown sweater vest, the clothes Mr. Gardner usually wears. It must be Mr. Gardner. The scene is shocking. Everybody make a sanity roll because his head's been mutilated by lots of knife cuts. Oh. It's hard to tell, though, in all the dried blood. They make some assumptions here. And you said this was Gardner, though? This was? Uh, It's his clothes. Ooh. I'll go with that. I got a five. 13. I got a, I got a 12 out of 70. Uh, what is All right. Um, let's see. I just want to call you Florence, Matilda. Matilda, take four points of sanity damage. Everybody else. Oh, oh. And, and Frank, you take two points of sanity damage. Everybody else take one point of sanity, san, sanity, uh, sanity? sanity damage. Yeah. <laughs> All right. This is your shock oh. at finding the dead body. Matilda, uh, uh, not sure if you want to be that nosy anymore. Oh, I definitely want right. to be nosy. Tommy Bobby is at the top of the stairs, uh, pretty <laughs> curiously wanting to know, hey, what's what's going on, guys? What what can you see? What's going on in there? Hey, hey, hey. T- Tommy hey. Bobby, no. Hey, no, kid, there's a back. dead body in here. Come check it out. Uh, Pierre Golick, no, no, you speak uh, bullshit. You go back. Uh, Tommy Bobby, go back to maths. Uh, oh, you kiss your mother uh, with that mouth? Oh, uh, you, 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 mother, you, my Korwa. Uh, I cannot believe you speak such horrible language here. Because, uh, you're uh, the, one, who, be you're the one who's dropping S bombs over there. And so as they're talking, I'm walking into the room. Okay, uh, Officer Flanagan, it specifically says. To ask the beat cop investigator if he or she wants to send Tommy Bobby to get a detective. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I'll definitely do that. Just give me a second to look at this first. Before I involve them, I just want to make sure that it's 
really a murder or if he just fell and maybe hit his head or something. Well, yeah, you be, you better get a detective because it seems like you're not one. Looks like hey, you fell. There, bucko. Hey, you're Looks never like going to get any. If you want to be a detective, you got to be a detective, pal. Well, I'll detect something. I'll detect my foot up your ass. <laughs> All right. That's, uh, <laughs> don't you want to go look at the dead guy over there? That's what I'm doing. <laughs> Seems like you're arguing with me. <laughs> well, I would love to find out what he's been up to in here. So I'm just going to ruffle through some papers and any books that might be sitting around or anything that looks like it's not too close to the body. Okay. And I if, will... I, if I see you looking at books, uh, I go over to you and I say, uh, uh, Mr. Gardner uh, borrowed three books from me. Uh, and I tell you the names of them. They are um, The Dreamer's Dictionary, uh, Myths and Legends of Ancient Greece and Rome. Uh, actually, four books, The Interpretation of Dreams by Freud. Uh, I don't actually I don't care much about the primer of uh, Greek vocabulary, but the one I'm most interested in is the Dreamer's Dictionary. It's a uh, it's very valuable, and I, uh, I I need it back. So I go looking for that. If you happen to find it, please let me know. Okay, I'll give you a brief description here, and I just kind of dropped a map into the chat there. Um, everything is in order in the room except for the body on the tarp. There doesn't appear to have been a fight. The furniture is upright and there are no bloody footprints. The only unusual trappings sit on the floor in front of the corpse on the tarp. A piece of blood-stained paper lies between two black candles, which have both burned down to their stubs. Inside the room, going clockwise from the doorway, is a wardrobe, a bed, a nightstand with lamp, an ornate bookcase that divides the room into two living areas, a window, a small table set in the corner with two chairs and another lamp, a fancy upholstered chair, overhead cabinets built into one of the walls, and another table along the wall to the left of the door. The room is large enough for the five of you to move around even as they step over the body. Having more than two people in the sectioned off bed area would make it crowded since the bookcase is positioned to make this more of a sleeping alcove. Uh, Frank is going right for that wardrobe, assuming that the officer came straight in and is bent over the body and has his back to it. I am straight in and I am looking over the body. Okay, so I, okay. since his back is to me, I'm going to go right to the wardrobe and see if I can find any valuables. Okay, would this be the uh, the nightstand, the upholstered chair? Hold on. Is that going to be the ornate bookcase? Uh, no, it's the wardrobe. Yeah. All right. It'd be nice if they just put everything in order. There we go. Okay. All right. It, wait, um, let me guess. Was it under W? I'm not really sure. <laughs> and for, for those who listen, who are listening audio only, Michael is scratching his forehead with one particular <laughs> finger. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. As you kind of scratch around in the wardrobe, uh, you find some clothes, some shoes, and a locked wooden box. Oh, how big is um, said locked wooden box? It's, it's really not terribly big. It's probably, oh, about six inches by about three inches and just a couple of inches tall. Oh, perfect for me to um, put down the front of my pants and then tuck the shirt over it. Make a stealth of suck, roll. Suck my belly in. Make a stealth roll for your snide little W comment. Stealth. All right. All right. Um, so I missed it, but I'm going to burn luck to make it. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Burn that luck. <laughs> yep. So that is success. All right. So you've got a box down your pants. Congratulations. Excellent. Thank you. I've won Call of okay. Duty twice tonight. Um, you want to make I'll a go. wait? Make a spot hidden roll while you're buried in the oh, cupboard. Okay. Uh, success. I think it's a normal success. Yeah, it's a normal success. All right, so as you uh, are ruffling around the clothes and you, you slip the box into your pants, um, you notice that there's something shiny underneath the clothes in the bottom of the wardrobe. 
Oh, I'm grabbing it. Okay. That shiny thing would be a 32 revolver that does 1d8 damage, and it's loaded with six bullets. Hell wow. yeah. That's Man. going in the back of my pants. <laughs> Bang! <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Can we please have him roll to see if he blows his bullets? Oh, up? my God. Was the safety on? <laughs> it's a revolver. There is no safety. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I got oh. shot in the buttocks. I don't know why that's about. It's perfect. It goes, you know, tucks right in the back there. So so fits with your character. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see. Officer Flanagan, did you want to do any examination? So of I the am body? doing it. Yes, I'm doing an examination of the body, and I'm looking, uh, you know, to see if I can see where he was, was if he was shot, if he was stabbed, if he was bludgeoned. Like, if, I'm trying to get a sense of how he was killed, or if he All was right. killed. There's uh, there are deep cuts around the head as if somebody has traced a spiral from the crown of his head to his neck. His head's all shaved, like cleanly shaven. And um, there's this you can uh, even through the dried blood, you can see the grooves of this kind of perfect spiral shape that goes all the way down the head and to the neck. Um, oh, Jesus, that's terrible. Yeah everything's just you know he's very he's very rigid the rigor mortis is very uh his clothes are blood soaked but of course it's dried um and uh have you rolled him over or are you just mm. looking at him i'm i'm looking first before i roll him over okay so gonna, if there's nothing else to see then i'm gonna roll him over uh give me a spot hidden success okay so as you as you continue to kind of look on this sprawled figure who's face down on the back of his hands his legs and arms um uh he has all of these scars uh uh and and they seem to be these similar except smaller spirals um anywhere that's exposed so far so like kind of on his arms maybe the back of his neck um, you see these older scars, and uh, you're, you're no you're no doctor, but uh, these would these scars would seem to be months worth of scars, right? That they they appear to be in different stages of healing. Um, the face and the head don't have any of these scars, and uh, that's it until you roll over the body. Okay. So I'm going to roll the body over. Okay. And um, uh, he's very stiff and heavy, right? And as you push him over, there's kind of a cracking sound as the uh, the dried blood um, that, that stuck to his shirt um, peels off the tarp. And in fact, you have to kind of stand on the tarp, right, to kind of separate the, the blood's kind of acted like a glue between the shirt and the tarp. Um, and you, you yep, that got graphic pretty quick. <laughs> uh, that's not in the paper. I made that up. I'm sure um, you did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Tis for in introducing kids to Call of Cthulhu. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, scenario a age appropriate eight to ten. All right. Um, okay. Uh, as you peel it back, um, the, there's a an obsidian blade. Uh, laying kind of in the in the it's stuck to the tarp in the dried blood, um, and uh, making a praise roll though I don't know why maybe Officer Flanagan has some street smarts about value. Uh, no. Okay. How about a first aid roll? You want to give me one of those? I can give you a little bit more information. Sure. Uh, is a 96 uh, a good thing? <laughs> For Michael, it is. <laughs> I hate this game so much. <laughs> Officer Flanagan, you're not going to get promoted as you just totally fuck up the crime scene by um 
Uh, you you slip and um, you tear off his shirt and a lot of the skin comes off uh, of his oh, chest because oh it's no. kind of oh old no. and decaying <laughs> and and you've really kind of messed up the ability to make any more sense uh, uh, about the body. Good job, Officer Flanagan. Way to go. Uh, can I see if I see the obsidian blade? Oh, uh, sure. Make a spot hidden. Eight. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, you're watching um, the officer desecrate this body pretty closely, and you I'm, catch yeah, a glint. Uh, yeah, uh, Officer Flanagan, uh, uh, may I take a look at that uh, blade? That I looks, suppose uh, so. Just looks... don't do anything else to the body. I think I've already made some mistakes on this one. Yeah, okay, touch it, yeah. touch it all you want. Couldn't, couldn't make, hurt. Uh, I'm going to make a, an appraise roll. 41, I have a 40. Uh, I'm going to burn a lock to... Okay. Uh, uh, th this is a, a very nice blade, and it's probably worth $60 or more to the right collector. Okay, I deal, I deal with collectors of strange things all the time. Is, is there any chance that I might have seen it in one of my books? <clears throat> Ooh. Uh, make a knowledge roll. Sure. Uh, okay. Regular knowledge or knowledge knowledge occult, probably, right? Yeah, give it occult knowledge. That sounds good. Uh, oh, yeah, 70. Uh, 25, yep. I have seen that okay. before. Yes, you have definitely seen it uh, before in some of your reading, and I was going to see if it gives you anything more, but... Um, with that, uh, it, you notice you know that this is a ceremonial knife, and that it's been used in many or, or this type of blade, especially the obsidian, uh, is really important to many occult rituals. Uh, Officer Flanagan, um, this is this is not just a a, a normal artifact. Uh, I mean, you can see the flaking. Uh, it's similar to other uh, uh, Paleolithic uh, artistry, but uh, this particular type of knife is uh, pretty much devoted to uh, uh, ritual uses. Oh, uh, paleo what now? Uh, I just kind of heave a heave a sigh and I go. I was going to say something Sorry. racist because I'm Irish, but even <laughs> okay. though I'm Irish, I don't want to do it. <laughs> you don't do it. <laughs> oh, you filthy potato eater. <laughs> All right. Um, you could make a spot hidden, though, to see if you notice something else while you're there. Oh, cool. Uh, 36. I hope that's good. Let me see. Spot hidden. 45. Yep. I see a little something. Okay. All right, so I am going to send this little piece of paper over to you. Ooh. And um, it's, well, the one that, it's the blood-soaked piece of paper that was between the candles. And make a Greek roll on top of that. Oh, boy. Let me see if I... What languages I have? Uh, oh, I actually have that. Okay. Yeah. You recognize that... It, it, 20, it is in Greek. 28 out of uh, 40. Oh, well, look at that. Then um, you get this one, too, with the translation. Oh, my gosh. Oh, wait, not that one. <laughs> That's That would be to everybody, but only Wilfred Punkernob can actually read this paper. All right. Okay. okay. Uh, so that's what you, that's what you're able to translate it to. Okay. Let me... All right. Can you read it there, Mr. Punker Knob? Uh, I'm still saving it. it was, uh, I was going to go Irish. I'm still saving it to my desktop. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, where's the? Uh, so while everybody's doing I, this, I don't want to I... take up time, but I'm going to be searching the bookshelf, like sort of hiding. Oh, okay. Well, and I was I, searching the desk. Yeah. I was going to say, let yeah. me get to Matilda. Matilda was 
looking through the desk. Or a table, I guess. It looks like a desk. The table and two wooden chairs? No, the one um, right by the door on the right is labeled table, but it looks like a desk. It has a single chair and maybe some books on it. And... Oh, boy. Let me see. Oh, yeah, because the, the one the one across the room looks like a desk table, and that almost looks like there's a, a chair pushed underneath it or maybe a drawer being opened. Oh, yeah. Okay. But the other one's got like what looks like a, like a comfy Papers chair in front of it. And stuff mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's like mm -hmm. right right on the way in so there's mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i'm Sorry. just poking around yeah. i mean bed nightstand ornate bookcase oh boy this is what we get table and two long table by the door here we go yeah yeah with the piles of organized correspondence and an attractive mm -hmm. wooden holder for paper pens and some envelopes a man's hat sits on the corner of the table. Correspondence, you... did you say? Oh yes, nosy neighbor. <laughs> Perfect. There's a there's a note from a business associate asking Gardner if the ledgers have been finished. It implores Gardner to make haste as the ledgers are needed as soon as possible. And the letter is dated June 14th, which happens to be seven days ago. There's a letter from Gardner's bank manager in Scotland regarding the dwindling funds in his account. The letter warns that unless measures are taken to address the situation, Gardner's account will be cleared out within the next six months. And then there's uh, a range of kind of unopened letters um, that come from an assortment of domestic, Scottish, and English senders, as well as some from further afield. How very interesting that he didn't open all of his mail and now he's not around to do it. So if nobody's looking, I'm just going to start opening envelopes. Oh, you better, you better watch out. Uh, Olga is not going to have that without uh, keeping a watchful eye. So should I do a spot hidden? Is that fair, Keeper? Well, or? I mean, Olga, Frank is stealing shit. Uh, <laughs> Wilfred's talking yeah, about knives. Lots are hidden to be spotted. And and Matilda is uh go rifling through his mail. So, um, and Olga, you're pretty much in shock. So I'll tell you what. Oh, make us yeah. Make a spot hidden. Okay. Thirty eight. That's a regular success. Okay, and then you can roll a d6. One to two, you focus on Matilda. Three to four, you focus on Frank. And five to six, you focus on uh, Punker Knob. Three to four. Right. Of course. So, so you're, you're getting most suspicious about Frank rifling through the wardrobe. Uh, so, and... Frank, so you'll, 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 you'll suddenly, as you're going through this, you'll have that sense that sort of that hot, breathy sort of air you know, feeling behind your neck and mm -hmm. just sort of there's somebody behind you and you just hear the like large, I always say clogs, but like large orthotic shoes of the <laughs> 19 whatever, just, like, like, like stop next to you. Um, and I'm going to do a intimidation check actually. Intimidate. Ooh, nice. um, mm. <clears throat> uh, I got an 80. Ooh. My intimidates a 70. So I'm going to spend them, <laughs> and you just hear, "What are you doing to Mister, oh Mister James Wednesday Gardiner's uh, wonderful <laughs> things?" There's no accent I can keep right now. <laughs> That's like three accents at the same time. That's so good. Uh, oh no. So, um, I, how does this work? What keeper? What I, I am intimidated. What does that mean? Um, or do I roll against it, or, or am I just automatically intimidated because he success or she succeeded? Yeah, it's not. I. Wh what are you trying to get out of this? I guess I should ask that, Olga. Uh, well, what, what are you to... hoping to do by intimidating Frankie boy? Well, I'd like to scare him to the point where he either drops what he has in his hands or backs away or, or basically sort of reveals what he's trying to do. They're um, both in it. They're both in his pants. 
Fitz. I was going to say, <laughs> show me what's going <laughs> Well, well hey. that would be better. I, I but... saw you feeling around front of pants, back of pants. You need to drop pants. <laughs> drop down now, mister. Drop I think it'd be now. best. Yeah. If, so, if Frank, happens, let's, then, let's yeah. make a dexterity roll. Then she's basically going to force you to make a dexterity roll to see if you get the 30. Eight or 32 revolver into the back of your pants or if you okay. drop it on the floor. Okay. Or like let's just say he rolls a 96. <laughs> he's he's going to shoot himself in the balls. I guarantee you. Uh, oh, it'd be really creative if I shot myself in the balls by trying to put it down the back of my pants. Long ball Frank. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Yep. The old Hell yeah. Testicular wraparound. So this was just a couple points from an extreme success. Okay. So, so I just, I got a little itch there. You know, yeah, sometimes exactly. sometimes the ass itches. What am I going to do? I'm a little nervous. There's a dead guy over there. People get itchy when there's dead guys around. And there's a big lump in the back of his pants. Well, if, so if you want something, it, something's <laughs> going on there. If you, want it, if you want to look for somebody doing something, what about uh, Matilda over there rifling through this, this guy's mail? Look at her. And there's a there's a freaking glass knife on the floor over there. Oh my God, he's ripping his. Look Mr. at that. Oh, that's horrible. You, he's ripping his skin you, off. That's terrible. I'm just scratching my ass over there. here. Well, you and your smelly asshole. You need to stop it. And uh, <laughs> and I just look over at Matilda and I go, you you stop rifling through mail that's not yours. That's not nice. Don't res- don't set such disrespect. Oh, yeah, I disrespect. Get that his skin's coming off. That's pretty We're disrespectful. We're just trying to figure out what happened to him. I mean, the mail could shed a clue. Yeah, Matilda, you don't want his a... death to go unsolved. Matilda, make a spot hidden. Okay, I don't know my stats. I don't know my stats. Uh, I did not get it. You're going to burn some luck? I could. You, you won't need it at the end of the scenario, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> um, I could burn 12 luck. Yeah, what's us sure. Dude, uh, I burned okay. 14. Yep, doing it. What's luck got to do, got to do. All right, you see a piece of mail that has fallen uh, down behind. You, you catch a glimpse of it between the baseboard and the uh, leg of the table. And it oh. appears to be opened. Well, let's see what this says. Surreptitiously in the corner. Yeah, Olga well, doesn't see. Well, you're picking you you catch you catch sight of it as Olga or Frank is pointing Olga in your direction. Oh. So you might have to you might have to save this one for, you know, a little bit. Oh. Later. Okay. Well, in that case, I'm going to open some it. drawers and see if I can find those ledgers. Does the table Ooh. have drawers? Uh, uh this table does not have drawers. Oh. Okay. Yeah. But the table across the room from where you're standing with the chairs in it, sure. Does it? Like it might, yeah. Well, um, I should want to see if I have sleight of hand and then maybe try to grab that letter. Oh, hell wanna... yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I should that. probably try to grab it, even though okay. this is a horrible stat. And it's totally, <gasps> I got it! Okay. Hey. Hold on, hold on you. <laughs> I did not get it. Okay. All right. So you you uh, reach down and then uh, you, you take it and you slip it right inside your your. I imagine you in this robe. Uh, is that what what are you imagining yourself? Words I in? never want Michael to say out loud <laughs> ever again. <laughs> I'm imagining Matilda and like you know like the curlers up and like one of those uh, okay. like okay. quilted right. robes. You know what I'm talking about? Like those quilted you, you robes. You do you, that... man. You do you. Oh, Jesus, my. Michael, I wear a robe once with you, and you can't stop seeing people in robes. Um, I mean, is it nighttime? I don't wear my robe all day. Oh, okay. I just didn't know since you know you're. I All like right. to present a good face to the world because I never know if somebody's going to invite me in for tea. All right, you you decide where you're tucking the letter. You tell me. Carry a large handbag. Oh, perfect. Okay, even better. All mm-hmm. right, slip it right into the large handbag. Mm-hmm. Okay. And... and then I'll work my way across the room. Of course, rifling through those uh, shelves. 
Well, no, All the right. cabinet's probably up doors. We'll see how much rifling I can do, but I'm eventually headed for the table. Oh, okay. And I'll, give the, I'll give the knife back to Officer Flanagan because it's evidence. Yep. And, and when there's a break, I'm going to go uh, have a uh, call out the door for Timmy Bobby, whatever the kid's name is, and have him go <laughs> get a detective. Pretty sure it's Billy Johnny. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. So you're shouting out to Tommy Bobby Billy Johnny. John boy. Yeah, go down to the station and get us a one of the detectives, please. This is definitely a murder, and the body was totally messed up when I got here. I didn't rip the shirt off. That's some fine Irish. Uh... <laughs> it's over. His accent's gone. I love how well he's covering his tracks here too. <laughs> Um, all right, uh, Matilda, as you walk by the bookcase is finely carved and has glass fronted doors, uh, either side of which are the busts of two flute playing cherubs carved into the upright moldings that support the doors. There is a drawer at the bottom of the unit. All of the woodwork is detailed in intricate scroll work. So mm. if you were to, uh, if you were, so you couldn't really like stop by you couldn't really walk by without um pulling oh, open that drawer oh hell i'm reading the <laughs> wrong damn thing never mind that's on the other side of the room okay i'm the worst all right um y'all keep telling me what y'all are doing while i find the uh well my uh financial well-being uh, hinges upon me getting that book back Okay. So I'm going to go over to the uh, bookcase and start doing a quick scan because I know exactly what it looks like. All right. Thanks for saving my ass because the bookshelf is right near the body. Um, you would just have to go around to the bedside to access the doors. But I just described it for you. So how convenient is that? Yep. So <laughs> what what side are the books on in the bookshelf? Are they on the room side or the bedside? They're on the bedside. Okay. So that's that's where... I'm trying to like poke around a little bit as long as Olga's like off my back a little bit. Um, but okay. I can I can scooch over to the nightstand if if the other you know <laughs> searcher wants to get in there and look a little bit. Uh, yeah. Right, really quickly, it, so as I'm waiting for the detective, I'm starting to look around. Uh, should I rule a hot spot hidden? Am I noticing that people are acting a little bit suspect? Yeah, and by I mean, people I mean like... Frank and Matilda. Yeah, I mean, they're all walking around. Everybody's kind of walking around like like vultures, basically. So oh, no, I, I, until just a second ago, I was uh, helping them out, and uh, Olga hasn't been. Yeah, I'm trying to find no, some Olga, clues I mean, here, see Olga if we can figure out why this guy's dead. I Officer Flanagan, I would never act in a way in that was the suspect. World. I got a 93. <laughs> this here is the finest this is the finest crime scene I've seen in my entire life filled with upstanding citizens like yourselves there's no way in the world we won't catch the killer yeah officer we're just trying to help you make detective pal or, you know the and more you're a fine fine young man there Mr. Frank many I hands make sure light I work the highest highest trust in you I'm sure that you will do your job very well I, I definitely will, and I definitely won't be touching the body again. <laughs> uh, Matilda, as you walk by those cabinets, um, the, there's uh, there. Oh, okay, now I get it. They're about at head height, and um, there's there's a tabletop underneath them. It's kind of like his kitchenette. Um, and has an electric hot plate on it. Uh, do you open the cabinets as you go by? It looks like a kitchen. No, I'm just going to head for that table that has drawers. Okay. And then on the other side of the room, then Frank and uh, Wilfred are starting to investigate the bookshelf, right? The ornate bookshelf. Yeah, I figure Frank's going to go right dressing. past the bookshelf. I'm going to go to the to the nightstand because, uh, you know, books, yeah, you, it's really tough to fence books. And he's okay. stuff that's smaller and more valuable. And I'm oh. kind of the only one in town that would buy them. 
Yeah. <laughs> All right. Make an appraise roll as you go up to the bookcase. This Wilfred. is me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 24, I think I have a really good appraise. Yeah, 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 that would make sense. So um, the, the bookcase itself is worth $75. You know that this is like a really mm. nice bookshelf. It's worth like a one Bitcoin in 1931. I don't think that's going to fit in your pants there, pal. No, no. <laughs> um, can I look for my particular book that I'm looking for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as, as you scan it, uh, there's a few books on finance and baking, some travel books for obscure places and then what particularly catches your eye are the occult books myth and legends of ancient greece and rome by em barons and the interpretation of dreams by sigmund freud okay myth and legends that's one of mine interpretations of dreams that's also one of mine uh, but i'm looking for the dreamer's dictionary okay the top shelf doesn't have enough books to fill it so a bookend is used to keep the books upright and it's a monstrous thing looking like a uh, kind of a gray green squid uh, made out of some unknown stone that almost appears to be wet on the surface, even though it's, you know, carved stone. Um, and uh, you're guessing, uh, well, I won't make that guess. Okay. And do you want to, do you want to search the, book case further oh yeah i have to keep going until i okay. find um... make an intelligence roll intelligence roll okay 56 i'd like to think i'm more intelligent than I that let me see so. yeah uh yes yeah. yep All i right. made it so but when you look at it the space between the drawer and the bottom and uh between the, uh, the so there's a drawer at the bottom and then there's shelves above it uh mm -hmm. the, the the gap is too big mm. um and uh, just feels kind of off to you okay i'll start uh, examining it see if there's uh, a way to uh to get uh, in there spot hidden or art and craft woodworking in particular 28. Uh, again, I'd like to hope that my spot hidden is better than that. Uh, whew, 45. All right. So you run your hands kind of along the edges of the scroll work and you're, you're just, you're, you're pressing with your fingers as you do. And uh, as you, as you run it through and you go between one of the pieces of the scroll work, um, a little button uh pushes and it um uh, you hear a clicking sound okay i uh, open the drawer or whatever it is okay and um and you reach underneath and you're looking and um you don't see anything officer flanagan you want to make a spot hidden yep Yep, I made that one. Button. Okay, uh, so as that button was pressed and the, the you're looking away from the body thinking, man, how am I going to explain this one to the detectives? You see a panel on the back of the bookcase, which is facing you flop down and open. Oh, what do we have here? And I'm walking on over and I'm like, back up, everyone. I'm doing investigating right now. And I open it up. <laughs> okay. Um, so there's, um, uh, there's a primer in Greek vocabulary. Um, it looks like two accounting ledgers, uh, an, an obsidian, a knife, which is identical to the one found under the body Ooh. and a silk bundle. Ooh. All right. So I'm going to take it all and I'm going to bring it over to the table. I'll take two trips if by some chance I can't okay. carry it in one. Yep. I'm going to be really careful with the knives. And uh, then I'm going to say, all right, we've got something to look at here. Let's open up the silk bundle and see what's inside. Okay. And, and then I'm going to start trying to, like, if there's knots or whatever, I'll untie them. And I'm just going to be as sort of careful. No, as the, I can the, be. The, you're pretty sure that inside the, um, the silk bundle is... Um, is a book and and as you unfold the pieces of silk sure enough there is this 
very, very old book in front of you. In fact, Wilfred, it's going to have you pretty much salivating um, just from the looks of it. Um, and uh, this is going to be... Um, uh, it, it, it's, it's all written in Greek. And as you, uh, Officer Flanagan, you're going to have no idea what it is, but Wilfred, uh, just from kind of over his shoulder, you think that you might uh, be able to bring some information to it. Okay. Uh, so before, it, bef before I head over that? there, I'm going to look at the, uh, the uh, statue that looks kind of moist. Okay. And say, uh, mm, that's very, very strange, very, very unique. Mm. And then I'll leave, hoping that Frank. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and then I'll, I'll head over and uh, I'll say, uh, uh, Officer Flanagan, I noticed that uh, there's an unusual book there. Uh, may I take a look at it? Mm, yeah, absolutely. Oh, yes, yes. It uh, appears to be uh, written in uh, Greek. Um, may I try to, uh, I'm going to try to read some of it. So sure. it's, so it's very, it's, it's very old and frail. Um, it, it's, of course, leather bound and cracked. Um, you very gently start to kind of open the cover and you see a stamp in the inside cover, or not really a stamp, it'd probably just be uh, an, an inked marking saying 1658. Okay. And, um, and there's a bookmark in the book. Okay, I'll carefully open it to the uh, bookmarked page. Okay, and give me your Greek roll. Alrighty. 99! Oh, oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> I, I automatically start oh, canting. No. The, uh, <laughs> it's so good. All right. Um, so uh, you you start reading. Uh, uh, basically, he kind of shuts you all out, Officer Flanagan. You keep making requests to understand what he's reading, but Wilfred becomes enthralled with this book and this writer who talks about making these visits to the dreamland, and um, and in that. Uh, He's, he's talking about having dreams while reading this dream book. And, and the dreams that he's talking about, Wilfred, are, are just becoming so visceral and alive for you. And, um, and, and the bookmark had instructions on how to enter this dreamland. And um, as, you, as you begin to read it, everything around you starts to go um, black. And... Um, the the people in the room turn turn into these um, kind of amorphous colors that start to shine. Make a sanity roll. Got to re-roll. It was on an edge. Three. Okay. <laughs> wow. Um, all right. So uh, you're, you're basically protected by this whole thing. But as you're watching Flanagan, uh, uh, Wilfred starts mumbling and saying all of these things, and he picks up the obsidian knife. Remember, there's a copy of the or a second yeah. obsidian knife that you put so, on the table. For what it's worth, if I see him reaching for the knife, I'm going to reach uh -huh. out to grab his wrist to get the knife away from him. Oh, okay. you, don't, you don't know I'm going to do anything bad with knife. I'm just looking at the knife. <laughs> circle, 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 circle. <laughs> So I don't know if there's a strength or whatever, but I'm trying to I'm trying uh, to keep him. Yeah, make a combat roll, I guess. Make a combat roll. What is what's a combat roll? Uh fighting, fighting? sorry. Brawl? Yeah, fighting. Brawl. Yeah, fighting, brawl. Got it. Which, you know, if you're a policeman, I would assume it would be pretty good. Yeah. Uh all right, I'm gonna burn seven points of luck to get it. You can't do that. Yeah, you can't put um, a knock oh. on fight. Yeah. Okay, then I missed. 
Okay, so um, uh, you reach for it, uh, but w Wilfred uh, seems uh, preternaturally fast with this knife. <laughs> And uh, he actually slices your arm, not deeply, but uh, he catches you uh, maybe like along the edge of the thumb. Uh, take a point of damage as you as you shirk your hand back because um, Obsidian's incredibly sharp. And to your horror, you watch as Wilfred starts carving spirals into the top of his skull <laughs> with the knife. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh. I hate this game oh, so my much. Gosh. Wow. And and again, for those uh, watching audio oh. only, wow, Chris oh. just made a really creepy face. Oh. Uh, hey, can I just well, ask, uh, just to keep the theme of it, are they spirals or are they the Greek key? You know, <laughs> no, he's definitely making spirals. He yeah, starts okay. like right. right at the top. And as he does, um, he's going deeply. And who's seeing this? Flanagan, you're seeing this? No, I probably am. Yeah. Matilda was walking towards the table. Oh, you would have your back to it then. But didn't he just he pick took it, it up off the of long, the same no, table? He, he, no, he took oh, it to the, the long, long table. table. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, Olga probably is, right? Olga's looking at everything and just pissed at everybody. So right. Olga and Flanagan sure. make sanity rolls, sure. Why not? To watch oh. as the Oh nice. Let's see what this does. <laughs> oh for goodness sakes. I failed. All right. I, um, my rolls have been so bad. Okay, you each take three points of sanity damage as the blood starts to pour down the face of Wilfred as he carves this this spiral into his head and I, it's just starting to stream down um wilfred do you take uh you, you're starting to lose a fair amount of blood and get pretty lightheaded and you take um you take four points of damage as uh you eventually collapse to the floor and the knife goes spinning out of your hands and lands at officer flanagan's feet this is fun. Does the knife <laughs> is the knife still solid? Because obsidian's pretty brittle, right? right? Like, is it still? Uh, that's true. Uh, make a. It's gonna be a carpeted floor, though, right? Oh, uh, you know what? You're right. There's actually because the body was on a rug on top of yeah. a tar or on top of a tarp on top of a rug, so sure it can hit the rug. Will uh, somebody make a luck roll? Wilfred, make a luck roll. You're the one. You're the one falling. Oh. I don't know, the, the graphic map that I found uh, when looking uh, for an image for this does show it as a wood floor. Oh, just missed it. <coughs> okay. Uh, I, have, I only have 34 luck. Okay, so the knife the knife breaks in two as it hits the floor and the handle and the blade, the obsidian handle and blade, kind of crack in two pieces and land at your feet, Officer Flanagan. Oh my God! This is the worst crime scene ever. <laughs> All right, I'm picking up the, the blade. I'm picking up the blade and I'm putting it on the table, and then I'm gonna see if I can help Mr. Punker Knob. Okay. What the hell were you thinking, cutting your head open like that? I'm sending you a message, Punker Knob. Wow, he's getting all the messages. Yeah. Come on, let me get to the message here. Well, if the this didn't grab my attention, that. then I guess Matilda's gonna check those drawers. <laughs> well, you might see it as an opportunity, right? You look over and an opportunity to read my letter. Mm, uh, that's what I'll do while everyone's there distracted. Yeah. Um, all right, so the letter that you're reading um, says. Uh, Let's see. Um, it, it says something to the effect of, Dear James, uh, what you have discovered is most likely and in our belief completely true. The spirals should protect you as you enter the dreamland. Uh, it seems that your practices of this scarification have built you a great body of armor and that you shall be well protected as you enter the dreamlands. I wish you best of luck on your journey and may we both meet each other there. Signed, 
Sir Edward Fremington. Okay, well, I had kind of been avoiding the body because it was just rather horrifying, but now I'd like to look a little more closely and like oh, example Olga's, the spiral. Olga's hovering you, uh, over the body, so well, you're going to you, have to... As you walk that. by me, uh, I answer Officer Flanagan's question and say, uh, the spiral protects me. The spiral will protect me. I'm only safe if I have the spiral. Well, Wilfred, uh, that sounds just like what this man Ed Edwin Edward said in this letter. Eddie. Edwin Word. Edwin Word. Well, whatever you say, that's who he is. Edwin that's who he is. Edwin. Edwin. Is, is the letter written in Greek? Everything important here is written in Greek. Well, no, it must be in English because I was able to read it. <laughs> let, let me or read German. It. Or German. Let me read this to you. I don't know why, but I just feel compelled to. <laughs> I, I call upon Yoke Sotho to hear by request the gate and the key. This vessel has been prepared. Empty this body. Transport my will. Prepare the way to dreams. I, Yoke Sotho, open the gate. I... And then I just kind of... Is it is it is it fair that I could have punched him at some point during that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, this might actually, uh, I, as you're reading, do you want to punch him while he's reading this? At I mean, po at what point do you want to punch me? You're hitting your crescendo, like, and you're just okay. disrupting everything. And my character is fuming pissed and just like wants you to shut up. And so I'm gonna at least try to throw a punch. As you got like your hands in the air and your eyes are looking up, you know, just like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, make a make a, a fighting roll. Uh, a sixty-seven. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna push it, and uh, so I, <laughs> I I I walk over uh, to swing and punch, but I I trip over the body, and so I end up falling forward in this sort of you know, protracted almost uh, a lunge of a punch. And let's see. God, it would break my heart if you landed on that broken obsidian blade. Yeah, me too. <laughs> oh, 10, 12, 12, 12. Ooh. Uh, she lands a hard I, uh, one. Do hard, I get to dodge? To uh, yeah, you can You can try and dodge while you're reading. It'd be a, it'd be a disadvantage. Though, oh, no, I had reading. this. I wasn't reading. I had it memorized. Oh, okay. Sure. You were just in rapture. Oh, 93. All right. So I was going to uh, say, you've got blood in your eyes, so it would be awfully yeah. hard for you to. Yeah. Yeah. So Olga, Olga connects with you, and I mean, just lands one in the jaw. Uh, that's going to be, I'm assuming you don't do any damage bonuses, right, Olga? Uh, let's see. So damage is 1d3 plus db, and my db is, oh, gosh, my damage bonus is plus 1d4. Oh, so okay. <laughs> I, we need a D3 plus Oh, a dear D4. God, I hope she kills me in front of a cop. <laughs> oh, please, please let it happen. All right, so I got a, uh, so I got a five, and for D3, what's that? Is that, oh, is that, that's three, isn't it? Um, how do they do that? You divide it by two, right? Yeah, 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 so it's three. And then I got a two on the um, D4. How much, how much health did you have left after your bloodletting? I'm dead. Oh, oh no. my God! <laughs> yeah, I only had six health left. Oh no, he he wow. hit you for five, or she hit you for five. Yeah, three plus two. Oh, okay, I have one left. Yeah, that, sorry, the five on the D six. We should cut it in half, right? At the one. Oh, right, three. okay. So she does this lunging cold clock of you, um, which which lays you out across the floor at Officer Flanagan's feet. Uh, your bloodied scalp, kind of. Uh, laying on the floor and your eyes briefly roll back in your head. Um, as you do that, Olga, the, the consequence for kind of tripping over the body, uh, Flanagan, make a spot hidden. Come on, spot hidden. Got it. 
Okay. Um, you notice um, oddly that as she does this, the feet of James Gardner uh, twitch, and you're not totally sure if it's because Olga kicked the body as she lunged forward. Um, but as as Wilfred was reading, you're you're pretty sure that this corpse moved, though who knows? It could have just been Olga's actions. Um, and before we take a break. We need to backtrack to a second because Frank was at the nightstand and um, on top of the nightstand was a copy of the Dreamer's Dictionary. Um, and in the drawer of the nightstand is a uh, looks like a handwritten journal uh, along with a small corked bottle of liquid and a small vial containing an off-white powder. Um, Knowing your background, you probably know what these are. So give me a knowledge roll to see if you know what they are. Okay, and morphine. See if you want to drink first or snort first. <laughs> um, knowledge is EDU. Yeah, well, whatever your street smarts is. Street uh, smarts. Probably whatever's higher, your intelligence or your edu. Use that. Okay, that'd be intelligence. Either of them are, ter are terribly good. I would argue it would be the lower of the two, right? Being the uh, these e are, uh, either way, my ninety-three drugs. ain't gonna cut it. Yeah. Oh God, uh, you're pretty sure that like uh, um, it might be a little bit of whiskey and a little bit of pain reliever. Then okay, like yeah, I mean a little bit of whiskey. I, I don't know. If, let's see. Yeah, I'm thirsty. Oh, is... I'm gonna knock that shit back. <laughs> mm. Olga made me nervous. I gotta calm. I, I gotta calm down a little bit here. Oh, that was the strangest tasting whiskey you've ever thrown back. Uh, mainly because um, as you smack your your tongue against the roof of your mouth, you realize, oh shit, that wasn't whiskey. That was laudanum. <laughs> bye bye. <Dang. laughs> Well, that's, that's some weird, weird whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> at, le at least your arm. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't think it's least... going to be any, any condition to use anyway. <laughs> oh, boy. Y'all all better duck in a minute. That's all I can say. Oh, my God. All right. Well, let's uh, let's take a quick break, and we will uh, we'll be back in five, ten minutes to finish this thing off. And we're back from break. Michael, take it away. All right. And so uh, where we had just left off was Frank had taken a nice good old shot of laudanum and uh, Wilfred's laying across the floor, uh, bleeding and, all over the place. And I'm currently unconscious. I'll be knocked out for a couple minutes. At Flanagan's feet. Uh, I'm going to try and do first aid after, on him. Okay, Olga's on her knees after throwing a punch at Wilfred and Matilda. Are you? You were talking to the group. So, so I was, but uh, I think my care for the people in my building might inspire me to go try to help Wilfred. Oh, okay. So you're gonna you're gonna help Flanagan. Uh, either of you have a first aid you want to make a roll on? I'll roll yeah. first aid. Oh, I'm rolling first aid too. We can okay. do it together. I mean, it's fine. Yeah. Or if one of you can take a bonus die. That's fine if somebody's helping out and has a little bit of knowledge there. And uh, also, officer, remember I sliced your arm a little bit with the Oh, yeah, uh, that's knife. right. Yeah. Yeah. Attacked an I'm officer not... of the law. No, I my, my, I mean, from what just happened and how crazy you're acting, um, I know you'd be a good guy. So my sense is that there's something hinky afoot. It's okay for Officer Flanagan to bleed onto your head, Wilfred. Don't worry. It, it, he's an officer of the law. It's totally clean blood. So I'm going to burn some luck points to get it. That's okay. good, because if I burned enough luck points to get mine, I would be out of luck. All right. And tell me what you're doing for poor Wilfred. All right. So I am... Uh, applying pressure like i got like a you know a shirt or just something and I'm applying pressure on the blood on the head like where okay. the wounds are to try and keep it from bleeding um and i'm looking at the face and my guess is that he just he got cold cocked 
and uh, really the bleeding is the bigger danger. Yep. And so I'm trying to stabilize. And I guess I'm probably, just very ineffectively my... wiping some blood off of his face. And I would suggest that my jaw is broken as well to take, oh. like, yeah, that, 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 like, it's a well, lot that of, probably feels great damage. when I wipe that the blood huge off. Huge amount of. I'm yeah. sure that's really comfortable. And some teeth flew out as well. Yeah, that would <laughs> make that yeah, as you hit the floor. That would. I mean, you took a lot of damage there. I like that. The broken jaw, the teeth flying out. Uh, yeah, it's okay. We'll put you out of your misery soon, Wilfred. Don't worry. <laughs> Okay, so when I, if I realize that the jaw is broken, then I'm going to, once I have the thing on the head, I'm going to get like another shirt or something or ask Matilda to bring me another shirt and I'm going to tie the entire thing around his head multiple times so that his jaw gets locked shut and it ties the bandage on. So he's, he's going to look a little bit like Marley, like Marley's okay. ghost. <laughs> That's, that's actually exactly what I was envisioning. Mm -hmm. And as they're doing this, Frank, you know, they're, they're administering all this. You all of a sudden feel a little steppy. You know okay, what I mean? Yeah, Just yeah. a little yep. like, yeah, like, oh. uh, Now, I do have this other white bottle, a bottle of white powder, right? Yes, you do. Okay. Um, so, I, and I know that, do I see that Wilfred is out and that they're trying to help him and that there's a yeah, couple yeah, yeah. of... All right, yeah, so yeah, I'm going to yeah. bring that over and say... Hey, 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 this could this will bring him right back. He could use some of this. Just to say, do you only it's say perfect that or first do you aid. do no, something I, with it? Um, yeah, no, I would go over and like, you know, try and put some in his nose. Hey, somebody want to help me? Give him some of this. Take a sniff here. Just, just to wake this him right up. Period. Hold on, just at this time period. Is it is it actually a powder or are they still drinking it? Because that used to be how they imbibed. No, it's not laudanum. I don't, I don't remember no, what no, the, no. What okay. the what, Oh, okay. Yeah. I, oh, I don't know. You said it was a white powder, right? It it says it says in the scenario that it's a bottle of white powder. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Huh. Yeah. So Willie, Willie, take like a take a little sniff here. Up his nose. Yeah, I'm just trying to you know it, just try to drop some on there so that when he when he inhales it, it sucks in. All right. Um. Well. Uh. Wilfred, we'll give you uh. Roll a d6. And I'll I'll like wait until you know I'll, I'll watch him exhale and then when he goes to inhale I'll drop a little in there. One. Oh yeah. Okay. All right, you get one extra hit point as you feel a little bit revived, <laughs> somewhat barely uh, from the hit of cocaine that Frank is pouring down your nose. And and, and mechanistically, uh, it should stop the bleeding or slow it down. Oh, that's, that's, mm -hmm. oh, look at that bonus. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, here you go, Willie. I'll give you the whole bottle. You can take it whenever you want. Okay. <laughs> It'll make you feel a little bigger. <laughs> You're going to be a little bigger. So I'll, I'll just kind of stagger <laughs> over to the bed, and I'll just sort of sit down, and every so often I'll <laughs> take a little take a little bump. I'm, okay. feel, I'm feeling a little funny. Why do you give me some of that? <laughs> I offer it to anyone else. Who... All right, I'm gonna take some. I try and cancel this out. <laughs> make, make a pow roll. <laughs> That's how it works, right? They cancel each other out. I'll yeah, be back to normal. Ba perfect balance. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's why they were together in the jar, right? <laughs> right take a exactly. little them and then you take right. a little cocaine to bring yourself back. Yep. Oh my god. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> what do you roll? Oh no. <laughs> Can you see that? Uh, well, that, that looks like a 99. Or yeah. a, 99. Oh, nice. 99. <laughs> Whoa. That's a 99 on my cocaine roll. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Let's go. Okay. So, I think I think what makes the most sense here is that in your <laughs> confused state of laudanum instead of putting a little like onto your finger or something mm -hmm. you just put your nose over the bottle right yeah and you did a big old like <laughs> yeah. man just boom um it hit you and um you're looking over wilfred because he just stole all of your feel-good powder <laughs> yeah. 
And all of a sudden, I, I'm not sure exactly what the effects would be. I'm sure if we were watching uh, like train spotting, you know, your pupils would like, mm -hmm. would they dilate or constrict? Which one they'd, yeah, they'd constrict like all your blood vessels and your heart would start racing. Well, I thought and... you were going to say your heart would stop. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, no, no, that, that's a legit concern. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. you make a constitution roll here. Okay. It don't critically fail. Uh, how sad to die of a drug overdose in a call of Cthulhu. <laughs> right? right? <laughs> kind of amazing, actually. Okay. Uh, what, I think that's a success. Uh, oh, yeah, that's a success. Okay. Um, it just means you don't die. Okay. Um, your heart's racing, and you kind of flop backwards on the bed, and you're staring at the ceiling and everything's just going so fast in your mind and you're spinning and you're babbling out loud next to Wilfred that neither one of you put together could make a full <laughs> sentence. Hell yeah, I'm well Okay, it's up to you guys. <laughs> oh. oh. As as this is as this is going on, uh, uh <laughs> Among among those two, um, oh my gosh, I'm scared to click on this. Oh. Yeah, I shouldn't have. Yeah, I probably what shouldn't have it? either. Thank you for the warning. I won't click on it. Oh dear God! What wow. is that? <laughs> I'm not looking. <laughs> oh. Not looking. Oh, uh, is that a heart? Oh my God! Rick is Rick is sharing things oh my in God, the that's amazing. in the chat and. Generally speaking, is a rule looking. of thumb. If Rick shares it, I don't look at it. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Oh. Okay. Yeah, when there's a reaction like that, I'm not looking either. Okay, um, so as you as you're staring off at this Flanagan, Matilda, I'll give you one one more. Oh, you were helping with uh, Wilfred as he came over. Olga, I'll give you one more action. Where, where? Just tell me where you are. Let me know what you're doing. Uh, what would you be doing? I just cold cocked. You're doing the cocaine. Uh, <laughs> what I'd be doing? I guess I would go back towards the body, and do I notice that it move? You know, or is it shifted from what it was? Um, and, Perfect. Make a dex yeah. roll as you go over next to the body. Mm -hmm. uh, Twenty one. So that's a uh, hard success. All right, and then make a sanity roll with that. Yeah, that, mm -hmm. you you mm -hmm. wanted to miss that first one. Great. Twelve. So I made that. Oh, perfect. Oh, good. All right. So you'll only somehow, um, as the body shoots up, um, there, there's kind of a dragging sound as the as the dried blood that's attached to the body pulls the tarp up, and uh, the mutilated body of the room's tenant shifts its limb and lurches to a standing position. As it does, you jump backwards, and as you do, you just kind of naturally react and jump back and you flinch. So you visually miss this. So you only take one point of sanity damage. Uh, Officer Flanagan and Matilda, totally you, need to roll, you need to roll for sanity as I describe what happens next. Oh, goodness. I'm so uh, glad that we're doped out of our minds. <laughs> hey, hey Will, Will, are you I, here? I, Did that I really have a happen? problem. Uh-huh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I rolled a 97. Oh, oh my God! This God is falling God. apart. Oh y'all are, oh. are amazing. This is a dream right, come now. true for Michael. This I is, failed, but not not critically. Okay, you so Scott or Flanagan, you'll take three points of sanity damage. Um, Matilda, they've got like a special little section for when you blow your sanity roll here. Oh, that's wow. nice. Oh, here we go. Um, all right, so you take six points of damage, which immediately... Oh, you get to try and attempt an intelligence roll here. Okay, wait, is that before or after the six points of damage? So you take the six points of sanity damage, oh. and then this is that intelligence roll that you want to miss? Yeah, definitely yeah. going to miss this one. Oh, I actually did miss it. That's good. Oh, okay. All right, so you don't go into a bout of madness, but you're mm. totally in shock as uh as what's his name as Jim? james mr. gardener as mr gardener <clears throat> lurches to his feet and um the spiraled flesh falls from his head 
Ooh. and reveals kind of the bloody skull underneath. Oh. And he has like he, he has all the spirals of flesh just hanging around his neck. Yeah. Does, does it does it come off kind of like a potato peel? You know what I mean? Like it, <laughs> yeah, that. it just oh. it just <laughs> I'm yes, taking out my 38 that. revolver as soon as I can. It's like you're making apple pie. Um, okay, you you failed your sanity roll. Um, so uh, you are able to note that the blood slicked skull um, is staring directly at the table uh, where you laid out everything. And then it does a thing. Where does it do its thing? Oh, oh yes. Yes. Um, in your in your horror, as y'all are all standing there, and Frank and Wilfred are just kind of like Wilfred, you after everything you've seen, uh, you may decide that this isn't. You could make a pow roll, and if you make it, you decide, and if you don't, I'll decide for you. Uh, Twelve. Okay, uh, so you can decide then if you want to acknowledge this thing in front of you, or you want to pass it off as potentially another hallucination. You've already had quite a few. Uh, I will acknowledge it. Even the stuff I've seen before, I am now convinced was real. So oh, I'm okay. convinced that this is real. All right. So you're you're watching this take place. Um, Frank's laying on the bed next to you, mumbling and kind of. And I'm. I don't know. I'm not even Um, as this is all going on, um, there's a. A, a small explosion from the front of Mr. Gardner's throat. Oh, good um, Lord. <laughs> and the explosion is more like a, a clearing out of clotted matter. Like a like if you, I don't know, had something stuck in, in an orifice and you suddenly blew it out really hard. Is it coming out of his mouth or out of the No, out of, out of the throat. And oh. uh, you love this, Scott. I know you do. Well, but I'm, just you you can't say the word loogie. <laughs> That's so benign. That's the word um, for this. That's lo what a loogie is. How, how about a flesh bezoar? Is that a? <laughs> hey! uh, uh, uh. <laughs> All right, and then uh, this this whistling sound comes out, and it, it, at first the whistling <laughs> makes you kind of shriek back or stand back in horror. And then uh, all of a sudden, it's very alluring and calm. I need everybody to make a pow roll. Pow, 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 pow. Oh, made it. 90. I missed it. Okay. Um, made it. Wow. Amazingly, uh, <laughs> the clot that it tries to blow out of its throat becomes stuck and obscures the throat and uh, you're all caught up in the alluringness of it for a moment um, but then you kind of all snap to uh, you I, all may I didn't take make an it. action what's that? I did not make it it doesn't, doesn't well, affect me because uh, I'm not looking at it <laughs> well the yeah. creature rolled a 100 so oh, okay. it screwed up oh. it's, yes okay. yeah. um, so anybody everybody can take an action Okay. So I'm, whether it was before and now or whatever, but I'm, I said I was taking out my gun and I'm yeah. shooting. Okay. Who and are you shooting? <laughs> the creature <laughs> with the, the loogie monster. Okay. Yes. And where uh, specifically, cause you're pretty much point blank in this room. Um, so uh, uh Tell me where uh, you're going to shoot it. I'm shooting for the like the chest. Okay. All right. So go ahead. You get to roll. Um, you get to roll at advantage because it's point blank for your firearms roll. Nice. I got a twelve. So okay. All right. Super and success. So okay. And so um, you fire. <laughs> right into the chest of the uh, of Mr. Gardner. As you do, there's kind of this magical blue glow that goes in all of those spiraled uh, scars. Remember those those scars we described earlier in the scenario? They all light up in kind of a, a blueness. 
and uh, he wavers for a second and then starts pressing forward um, towards the table. Will, are no you damage. seeing this? What's that? Will, are you yeah, seeing so this? No damage. Yeah. It's a beautiful man. Right? And I, I'm, I'm trying to pull out my gun, too. Oh, God, this this is going to end really well. <laughs> I put your lying um, on. I know I am. Uh, <laughs> all right, I'm going to try and roll on my her. side. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Keep a... I, sent, I sent you what I did. Okay. Um, you, all right, so give me, uh, give me a dex roll, Frank. You got it. Uh, I think that's a success. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's a normal success. All right. Um, all right, so you get your gun out, and as you do, uh, you see, you see Olga go flying across the room at Flanagan. Uh, what are you screaming, Olga? Uh, various Polish curse words at him. Uh, yes. yeah, I, I can, I can try and say some now if you would like. Uh, yes, we would like. Okay. Um, there you go. <laughs> And uh, uh, Flanagan, you see her running at you, and she's about to hit you. All right, I'm going to try and hit her upside the head with my gun. Okay, so that's a that's a fight back. So make a combat roll, or make a a brawl roll. Yes, that is uh. uh he can't decide. That's a, a, the <laughs> second best success. Hard, the hard second success. Be- okay, and Olga, he's only been playing yours? this Was for a, a hard or a regular? eight months. At regular. Oh, all right. So he whaps you upside the head with his pistol. Uh, you need to roll for damage there, Flanagan. Uh, a, a, a one d what? Uh, I'll roll for you. Do you have a damage bonus? So down, no. down at the bottom, uh, there should be a combat section on the bottom right yeah. of your main sheet. There's there's unarmed, but it's not unarmed. I've got unarmed and 38 revolver, but I don't have. Yeah, what's your un- what's your head. what's your unarmed damage bonus? One d three. But this okay. is this is a a blunt object. It's got to be more than a one d three. There isn't so, Scott. There isn't anything in the bottom on the right side. There's a combat. Yeah, section. it just says damage bonus is none. Build zero. Oh, and then okay. I dodge. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so the 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 butt of the gun does damage by itself, but then you get a damage bonus for your kind of strength. So that's what I'm asking for. So you do five damage to. He doesn't. He, he said he doesn't get a damage bonus. Just mm-hmm. FYI. Yeah. So there was no. He was talking. He was talking about the base damage of his unarmed. Ah. Okay. They, um, yeah, you could just do it on the. So fly. I think it would be one d three unarmed. Plus the bo- the damage from the butt. I think right. Is what- yeah, yes. butt damage is pretty significant. Yes. So, <laughs> oh, so God. You, Please you don't do butt her damage. Right, stay away right from across, butt. You clock her right across the head for five points of damage. What What's your total uh, health, Olga? 15. <laughs> wow. Oh, He's tough. Holy crap. Oh, oh my hey. goodness. So Olga so you takes st- a good <laughs> one. Okay, she hit me across the face, and I looked at you, and I spit out five teeth. And I... <laughs> All, right. All right. And then, uh, as soon, for what it's worth, as soon as I do that, I'm then going to hold up the gun to her. So as soon as I hit her, I'm taking a step back and aiming the gun at her. Perfect. All right. And Matilda, what are you doing? So to be clear, Frank and Wilfred are on the bed. Flanagan and <laughs> Olga are in, are in combat, and the formerly corpse is now standing. Yes, it's blue light. Yeah. May I grab the obsidian dagger that was under the corpse, since the corpse is now standing? Yes. Yes, you may. I will do that. Okay. And wield it in protection of myself. <laughs> okay. All right. Um. Okay. Do I get to fire right. my gun? Um, I or, think it's or is the first action are, just to pull it out. 
Yeah, I think as okay. drugged as you are, probably getting that out uh, is gonna is gonna take a little bit of time. So as you're pointing the gun, Flanagan, at Olga, um, uh, the 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 bloodied corpse starts walking towards the table and um, s s swipes at you. Um, I mean, just like kind of with this heavy um it uh uh what's that rigor mortis arm but it has kind of a supernatural force to it and uh what do you do uh try and dodge it okay and uh make a dodge roll nice uh i got a 13 which is a hard success. Okay, so you successfully dodge it, and um, as you do, it swings and then kind of lunges over you and grabs the book off the table, um, that, that really old book that uh, Willifred went through. Okay. Is it possible while the corpse's back was to me for me to stab him? Oh sure, but I did. Uh, that would probably be that would probably be the next round. Okay. Yeah, because you you grabbed the knife and then you were holding it I in did. front of you. So I did. so his back would be in front of you. All right. So uh, so this would start the next round of combat, and uh, y'all tell me what you do. I'm firing. I continue oh to God. stare at the beautiful blue light. Yep, and I'm gonna I'm shooting at uh, the creature again, and this time I'm aiming for the head. Okay, Frank, make a firearm roll. Okay, oddly, my brawl is excellent, but my firearm's terrible, uh, which ought to be fun. Uh, yep, terrible. And this uh, is where Frank shoots Officer Flanagan. That's a miss. Okay, and then. Um, Flanagan, make a luck roll. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, I got a thirteen again. I'm. I got wow. it. Now your right, rolls so, are getting good. Yeah. So yeah. there you go. Just in time. So yeah, that bullet, like it's a big old bullet, makes a hole in the in the cabinets behind you. There's a shattering of wood, and Flanagan, what are you doing this time? I'm shooting the creature point blank in the head. Okay. All right. Uh, go for it. You get it a, an advantage again? Yeah, you get a bonus on that. Do, 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 do. Nice. I got it. Which is, I'm so glad. You, it was an advantage, right? Yeah. Yep. So the first roll was a 98. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> But the second roll made it. You said it was advantage. Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, it says the firearms attack roll is made with a penalty die, which negates the bonus die for point blank range. Thus, the attack roll is at regular difficulty. Then I got a 98. <laughs> Yay! Oh, my God. Well, that's convenient. <laughs> it really is. Seriously. Oh. <laughs> Oh, well, wait a minute. I'll give you, there's a lot of rules for this short scenario. However, we can use the multiple investigators attacking the creature, which Matilda's attacking it. So I'll give you, I'll give you the shot to the head. You don't have to shoot Olga accidentally. <laughs> All right. So roll for damage to the monster. You can shoot Olga on purpose if you want. She can take it. <laughs> uh, I got a 13. For damage? If I, oh no, one die ten. I, I, I think. <laughs> what do you roll a d twenty? <laughs> I rerolled yeah. one d fifteen. Call a Cthulhu. <laughs> one d ten. Oh, a d ten for a pistol. That's uh, I rolled amazing. A, I got a, I got a four. Okay, so you do. Uh, so, um, you. You shoot it, and part of the front of the skull like blasts out across the wall, um, and uh, this this horrible whistling sound this time does come out of its throat. Um, everybody, make a pow roll. Yeah, 
Yes, he succeeded this time. How well did y'all succeed? I need so only, well. Only extreme uh, successes. Okay, let me oh. see. I, I rolled only, a one. I got it exactly. Um, <laughs> nope, mine's a regular success. But mine is not an extreme um, I success. only got a hard success. Okay. All right. So only so only Matilda, Frank, did you get an extreme success? No, I got exactly a success. Oh. I rolled a All 50. Right. Okay. Um this this tune turns alluring and and it dazes everybody. Um uh except Matilda and And Olga. Didn't you? No. 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 Oh, okay. No. Um, okay. And Save so, us, Matilda. Matilda, you get to take you get to take an action this round. Well, that'll be my wild, overhanded stab between the shoulder blades. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. From go behind, do I yeah. get advantage? <laughs> uh, no, but go ahead. Okay. Um, do I roll an unarmed strike or? No, you're armed. You have a knife. Make a. But I mean, brawl. I only have the numbers for unarmed. Um, oh. Sure. Make it unarmed then. Okay. Uh so I got it by one. Okay. And so and you you plunge the knife into the, the back of him and it it rips the shirt open as you as you bring down as you as you uh bring the blade the obsidian blade down uh and the shirt opens up it radiates in those blue scarred spirals all over the back of the body. Do I roll for damage? You can, but it won't make a difference. Wow. Okay. Then I won't bother. Um, the monster in turn uh, turns and like flings its, um, flings its arm at Officer Flanagan. And you can roll to dodge. You are able to do that if you want to. Does he want to? We need to get Officer <laughs> Flanagan. I got a 90. I got a 92. Oh, and so for that, uh, you take seven points of damage as he cracks you across the, oh, the no. head. And you go, you go spinning to the floor. How much uh, health do you have? I'm down to three. Okay, so that'll that'll pretty much knock you out. Um, you're on the floor. Um, Olga's on the floor, kind of mesmerized. Um, and so this would start oh, the next round of combat. Um, and Matilda, you get one action. Um, as you you've just seen Officer Flanagan get knocked out across the floor. Um, your knife's in its back. What do you want to do? Oh, the knife stuck in the back. I don't have the knife anymore. Oh, you can have the knife. Sure, I'll give you the knife back. Okay. Did I realize that it did absolutely nothing? Make an intelligence. Emily roll. was expecting to get to roll some damage. Make, make some. Make an intelligence <laughs> roll. Okay. I did not get that. Okay, you don't know that it didn't do some damage. Then I'm gonna stab him again. Okay, stab him again. Okay. Um, that's a hard success. Okay. And um, do you want to pretend to roll for damage, or do you want me to tell you about how all the blue lights on his back just like shine again? Oh, the lights are shining. That's great. <laughs> how about another intelligence roll? Sure, Have I figured I'll it out yet? Okay, you... I figured it out. All right, you figured not out that stabbing him in the torso <laughs> is not working. Okay. Um, but. Wilfred, but what about? Uh, did you notice what happened when I shot him in the head? I don't know. Oh yeah, you know what? If you want to, if well, either way, she missed, right? Or no, you you hit him, right? Me? Yeah. I stabbed him twice: once with a regular success, once with a hard success. That's true. Mm. Okay. All right. Well, all right. You you can. We'll call it, then let's say you aimed for the head because that would make sense. You're right. Excellent point, Officer Flanagan. She, her intelligence That's what I'm here for. should have been with a bonus because she saw you blow part of his head off so you can go <laughs> stab him in the head. So stab him in the head. Uh, I would love to. Oh, wonderful. 
weird. I would love to describe how you stab him in the head. So roll for your damage. Okay. Should I use my unarmed damage, which is 1d3 plus 1d4 damage bonus? Uh, roll 1d... Uh, with the obsidian blade, Roll uh, just roll 2d4 and add it up. Okay. He is tall. I rolled a 3 and a... Okay, so 5. Oh, so you did pretty good, right? You got kind of in that bullet hole that Officer Flanagan opened up and you shove the obsidian blade in and you draw it down the back of the neck. Um, the the monster lets out an audible moan as you as you pull the blade down and um, it uh, it actually spews some uh, uh, black ick all over Wilfred as it's walking towards you very ominously, Wilfred. Um, and you're so standing walking there. towards me. Yeah, standing there. Oh. You're captivated. Uh, yeah. I'm as, sitting, sitting on the bed. Just... Yep. And oh, um, and it walks over to you. And um, uh, any last words, Wilfred, with your broken jaw? It's full of stars. Nice. Oh. And as you say, it's full of stars. It backhands your jaw, and um, it, it, there's a cracking sound, crunching that kind of resonates through the room. Twist as my the, head around. Yeah, as your head twists around, and he falls backwards, face down, but torso forward on the bed next to you, Frank. Um uh and then the monster turns and um starts to head back into the main do, part do of the room. Do I get to do anything while he's there? Uh, no, you're all frozen. Everybody oh, make a right, sanity right, right. roll. Yeah, everybody make a sanity roll. Yep, I got it. I failed my sanity roll. Well, you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> no, so you definitely failed your sanity roll. <laughs> all right. Uh, you can't uh, burn luck on sanity rolls, right? Emily, take three points of sanity damage. No, you can't. Okay. Yep. No, I thought. Uh, I anybody, can't. anybody else who made it, uh, take. I a failed. Oh wait, Emily, you don't have to. Sorry, you didn't have to make that because you weren't under the spell. Everybody else, if you failed, take three points. If you made it, take one point. Okay. I'm really <laughs> blundering this one up. So I take one point. You take none. You are I take fine. None. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's great. All right. Okay. Um, okay, y'all get an action now. Okay, so is is he still by me? He's or... he's he he's he thwacked Wilfred. Wilfred yep. died, and he's yep. turned and he's walking away from you. All right, I'm gonna try and hit him in the back of the head with the butt of the gun. I don't know how to fucking shoot anything, but I can fight. <laughs> okay, so uh, disadvantage. <clears throat> okay, as you're wobbly footed and heart racing. Yeah. All right. Let's see here. Okay. Well, that's a success. And it's a success. 42. I got a, I got a 40 and a 42. All right. 60. Roll for damage. All right. So what do I oh, roll big, here? Big damage. Uh, so um, I roll my unarmed plus my damage bonus. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So... The sounds of dice, okay, the so anticipation, one. and he gets. Whoops, that's the wrong one. Enough. Probably four. not. Okay, so that's no four problem. plus whatever the gun adds that I'm I'm hitting with. Okay, roll a d roll a d four for the gun. Okay. The butt of the gun. Uh, two. So a total of six. Ooh. All right. Um. Do you um. <clears throat> Thwack it pretty good across the back of the skull. Um, you hear a, an auto, another really good cracking sound, right? You're just like hitting bare skull at this point. Mm -hmm. There's no flesh there. It's all kind of floating <laughs> oh, down God. around the neck. Um, oh, at this point, it's almost like a uh, uh, one of those banners that you wear for, you know, like the homecoming queen or something. It's <laughs> oh, just like God. the flesh oh, kind oh of my God. wrapped around the torso. <laughs> um, there's a really good crack as you go into the skull uh, and you, uh, the the back of it, kind of smashes inward in towards the brain. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Did I wake up or am I still am I unconscious? Uh, make a pal roll. Let's see. Uh, 15. Yeah, that should be enough to get you up. Oh, yeah, more than. Yeah. Wait, it's not going to get you up on your feet, but you could get up to a sitting position. If I can get as long as I can get to a place where I can aim, I want to shoot him in the head again. All right, go for it. It all comes down to this. Good officer Flanagan. Save the world. 50. Got it. <laughs> got it by all one. Right. What's up? I, I got a 49 out of 50. Okay. And um, damage. Yeah, roll for the damage. Nice. Uh, six. Okay. And uh, so. Uh, you're gonna love this, Frank. As right after you hit the hit him with the back of your gun, and you hear this crunching sound, there's a big um, splash as the back of that skull comes exploding back out with all of its brains across your face. <laughs> oh, you're my man, little man! Oh, oh. oh. All right. can everyone else see that, man? <laughs> uh, there's footsteps running as uh, uh, his body, his knees hit the ground, and he slumps forward, uh, clutching the book to his chest. Um, as you hear footsteps running up the stairs, what's going on up there? Um, as two policemen with their guns drawn uh, come into the room, and they see his dead body on the floor, and they're pointing their guns at you, Frank, and they say, get, get your hands up, get your hands up. <laughs> I dropped the gun and kind of <laughs> waved my hands around a little bit. Anybody got any of it? I should make him roll for this. We could have a total Night of the Living Dead ending to this, couldn't we? Uh, roll for uh, Persuade. Okay. Oh, my God. I got a 20. I don't know what my Persuade is, but I hope it's better than a 20. Yeah, that should be good enough. Okay. All right. Uh, so, uh, they oh, have my persuades guns... a 50. It's a hard success. Yeah. So they have their Ooh. guns swinging around the, you dropping the gun, convincing, convince them that, uh, it, you're, you're not a threat. Um, even though the guy behind idiot. you is, even though the guy behind you is dead and the guy on the floor in front of you is dead. Um, officer Flanagan, this might be where you'd want to step in. Yeah. I, I was just waiting. <laughs> so I'm, I'm trying to get to my feet and I say, Oh boy. We got ourselves something going on here that I can't explain, but it was terrible. Off there was Officer a... Flanagan? Is that you? Oh, I barely anymore. I'm almost gone. I'm going to meet me, mother in the sky. What? what? Ah, you got what? three hit points, you baby. <laughs> not, not, not when I'm done with him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, so I'll explain what's happening, and I'm going to say, and I think Olga, I think Olga Lubashevsky was part of it. She attacked me. <laughs> I'm pretty sure she's the one that orchestrated the whole thing. <laughs> Make a yeah. persuade roll. Make a persuade roll on that plan again. Oh my god. <laughs> Shouldn't it be an it, advantage because he's a fellow cop? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah by yeah, the definitely, way, you're right. Did you say? Olga Lubashevsky. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, that's, her, that's, her, name. that's her actual name. It's that's her name. Isn't it Bubashevsky? <laughs> no. Who no. no. made up no. Lubashevsky? No. <laughs> I swear that's that's what I wrote nope. down. I swear to God, that's what you said. Nope. You just heard. Oh, what you that's there. funny. So I uh, I got a success. I got okay. a five out of ten. All right. Do I get so, to do anything? I mean, like argue this? No. <laughs> uh, you, so, you, you did assault a police officer. Yep, I'm gonna say she assaulted me. She uh, she's played a role in killing Paul Wilfred Punker Knob. I was a witness. <laughs> I can tell you all about it. Oh wow, <laughs> this is great. So, all right. Well, Olga stands, and I'm just gonna try and do a lovely intimidate check to them, and just yell about. James being love of life, 
how could you shoot him? And I'll fall down to my knees and try and pick up the remains of like his head. Um, uh, trying to save, trying to save James Ramsey. No. Um, and as she as she's kneeling down, I'm saying, "Be careful! She might try and bring him back to life. She's already done it once." <laughs> wow! How do you, how do you do that? How do you, how do you, <laughs> there's, there's no witch trials, at least. All right, they um. All right, so the two the two officers pounce on you, Olga. And uh, put you <laughs> into custody. I have um, a ten or an eleven-year-old son. I don't know. What <laughs> well, I think uh, Matilda. We have will, we have services Matilda for that. <laughs> we have services for so that. Um, all right. So uh, Olga, um, o- over over the next few months, um, you're you're tried and committed to a facility for the criminally insane in. Um, <laughs> Your your role in uh in not demoralizing but de- desecrating a corpse and uh, performing satanic rituals, um, yeah. This, this went to a place. Okay. Yeah, uh, uh, Bobby, Tommy, Jimmy, John, um, is is taken <laughs> into state's custody. And, I don't care for him. It's the least I can do for my community. Yeah, and and Matilda ends up adopting him. And Matilda, along with Officer Flanagan, who become good friends, um, uh, they piece together uh, kind of the parts that Matilda stole, as well as uh, Officer Flanagan giving her access to um, some of the uh, evidence. And uh, you realize that uh, James Gardner enjoyed a vivid and fantastical dream life, but lost his ability to dream. He sought occult solutions to regain his dreams and found a spell that he believed would open the way for his dreams to return. Unfortunately, the spell and the book, as they often go, were cursed. Uh, A strange entity from another world tricked Gardner into performing the rituals he found in the tome. One One prepared his body to become a vessel for the foul entity, while the other led to his death, sending Gardner's soul into oblivion. His empty body was possessed by the entity, that's when y'all. Uh, that's what happened when y'all discovered it, and uh, due to your timely actions, uh, a few of you can feel proud to have played your part in foiling the schemes of a monster from beyond. So, uh, Frank, for your role, um, you addicted actually have to laudanum and I was, cocaine. I was about yeah. to say you become, become addicted drug, to yeah. yeah you uh, become, what was you in the a... box that I have down my shorts? <laughs> <That's great. laughs> um, well all right step one you got to cut a hole in the box <laughs> uh yes yeah, so let's get back to that box which um had you uh had you searched the body you would have found the keys to it but uh you just eventually after you you leave the apartment you bang it against the side of the building knocking the lock off uh, which um, inside it contains one hundred and twenty eight dollars. Oh, um, sick! W- which you use more to further opium your, for me. Further your addiction to laudanum and cocaine, <laughs> a sewing kit, and some grooming items. Excellent. Yeah, uh, Officer Flanagan. Even though you know the true fate of uh, uh, what's his name, James Gardner. You, you find no guilt in uh, Olga's fate uh, in the asylum, and uh, for her assault on you, which you took deeply personally. And Matilda, you're just, you feel that you're a better mother. Wait, wait, wait. Do I make it to a uh, detective because of this? Oh yeah, and you get a promotion for um, uh, helping Yay. stop the evil forces. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And, uh, wow. and I, I bequeathed my body to uh, medical science, so you can describe the autopsy or in, in, in grisly detail if you want. Or you to. can just look at the tweet that Rick sent. <laughs> actually, there, well, there Frank, I like to I like to think that you actually didn't die. Your your mind got sucked away into Ooh. the dream realm, and uh, you live in this fantastical space, uh, kind of like the Matrix. 
Okay. And you nice. died like inches away from the book that you were trying to get. Yeah, I didn't even get a chance to tell you it was worth a gazillion, man. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> wow. It was right there on the table. Yeah. And for the record, uh, we finished in under two hours. Awesome. Or to the dot. Fantastic. Congratulations. So, and yeah. Olga, what Very was nice. what was your actual deal? Were you actually involved with him, or were you really innocent? No. You were just in love with him? No. I literally just, it was a, that's the basis of the characters. I secretly loved that, that person. And, uh, nice. would, would pr- I basically, it says I would, I would protect him and rain down vengeance to anybody who would do Oh my God, you so, played it really ah. well. So you were completely innocent and, uh, locked up for yep. the rest of your life. Okay. That makes sense. <laughs> that's a happy story. <laughs> that's, uh, those, are, yep, those are the wages that's, of love. That's, that's called that's Cthulhu. It. Appreciate that. <laughs> hey, one of you died, one of you got promoted, and one of you is falsely imprisoned. And one's a drug addict. I got a kid. Look at that. Yeah. Pretty much the whole spectrum. You took you took my little pierogi. Uh, <laughs> you didn't even know how old he was. Everybody knew he was 11. You thought he was just he 10. He was 10. 10, 11. Poor Jimmy John James is going to be 10 for the rest of his life. <laughs> All, right. Uh, All right. If you would like to play this scenario, it is available for free on Chaosium, and it's called The Dead Border. And with that, that is, a, that is a... yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, so thank you for joining us tonight under the library. Uh, if you would like to get in touch with us, you can find us on underthelibrary.com or on Twitter at under the LIB. And uh, as we said at the beginning of the show, if you like what we're doing, uh, would like to support us, you can find that on patreon.com slash under the library. So for myself, for Michael, for Emily, Scott, Chris, and Rick, Thank you so much for joining us. We will see you next week when we will be continuing our Bloodstone campaign. And I'm sure all will be well. Thanks again for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Good night. Yocker's last stand. <laughs> <laughs>